Good morning and welcome to Bible Heritage. We're glad you're in the house with us today. We also appreciate you joining us online. Today we have a little bit of announcements to make. Today is our prayer zone. So I'm going to be teaching the children how to pray, why they should pray, and give them scripture and teach them to communicate with God as their best friend. Not to be scared to talk to Jesus. Um, next Sunday is Bible Heritage 116th anniversary. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Any of you that are willing to help cook, please get with Sister Alicia after the service. And she's preparing a list so that we know where we're going on food. Monday night. We are doing a study on the Holy Spirit. It starts at 6 or 6.30, Pastor? 6.30. 6.30. 6 here in the sanctuary. And it's, it's been a real good experience. Um, we've been learning a lot and encourage you just to come and dive in because we can never learn enough about God's Word. And on Wednesday night, we have my new best friend, LaDonna York, with us, and she is awesome. I just, I don't know her that much, but what I know of her, I love. God is working through her. Our scripture for this morning is in the book of Luke, chapter 6. It says, um, but I say to you, hear. Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. Wow. That's deep. Why God brought me there? I don't know, because my devotion this morning was Psalm chapter 76. I opened my Bible and I said, God, what do I say? How do I open and this is where it comes. And it is highlighted in my Bible. But somebody needs to hear that. You know, we have to be obedient. And God says to love everyone. We don't have to like them. Got many people I don't like. But I have to love them. We don't have to like what they do. But we can pray for them. So, right now, if you would, let's go to the Lord in prayer to open up this service. Dear Lord, I come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I ask you, God, to minister and move as only you can, God. Use each and every word that comes through song or message, God. And just let it touch those that need it, Lord. Let us be receptive, Jesus, so that we can get the feel of overflow. So that we can go out of these walls. And as we go out, we can run into people and they can see you. That is what we long for, God. We long to see this house full. We know that you're going to do it, Jesus. And we just give you praise in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing today, victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. I told Satan where he belongs, get thee behind, in the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Victory is mine, Lord, victory is mine, victory today. Oh, 
I get in there and I pray over my home and my family and over my children and my grandchildren, my husband, and I anoint my home and I tell the devil, you cannot come this way. And I ask the Lord to send his angels round about our home, around this church, around that parsonage. We don't have to allow the enemy to beat on us. Because victory is mine because of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, he's alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Sin is sin. 
<laughs> no matter how small it is, it's still seen. Right. And so I, you know, just thought I was going to be happy. I was expecting our baby. We had to pick a fence. And, you know, I just wanted the whole nine yards. And so um, a day before my birthday, we went to uh, Jacksonville, Florida, because my husband wanted to be a truck driver. And um, I was excited about going. You know, I was eight months pregnant, but I was healthy. I was strong. I had no health problems, no nothing. So I thought I was, it was just fine for me to go. And I saw my doctor, and, you know, I didn't tell her about it, but I just knew I was fine. I was 22 years old. So, you know, you think you're invincible. That's right. <laughs> but you're really not. <laughs> so, but anyway, we went uh, to Jacksonville, Florida, and, um, you know, we, I saw my dad for the third time. And um, and on our way back from Jacksonville, Florida, nine miles from here, way across, the car uh, truck hit us on the side of our car. I was in the front passenger side, and we had our three kids in the back seat. And um, my husband chose not to put on a seatbelt. Uh, I told him to tell his daughter to put on the seatbelt, and he said she's fine. And nevertheless, so I, we continued on, and lo and behold, we, it was raining that day, but it was just misty, and the ground was wet. We had gotten into a spot, and the car hydroplane, and the cars, and a truck hit us. First the car hydroplane, and then a truck hit us, and both cars spun around, and it ejected my husband out. He hit the concrete and dirt. He was paralyzed from the neck down. Wow. Uh, my six-year-old stepdaughter, she was in the back seat right behind me, uh, the truck hit right there. And she not having her seatbelt on, she went out the bike one and she died on impact. I mean, it, wow. it was horrific. And I just knew I couldn't live through this. And then also, um, the children, my other two kids, they were still in the car, they had their seatbelts on. And um, I was thrown into a ditch at eight months pregnant. Wow. I knew there was no way I could live through this. It, it, I just knew it would never be. So I was just waiting on the demons to come and take me to hell because I didn't witness to nobody. I didn't tell nobody about Jesus. I just didn't do anything for him. So I wasn't expecting him to do anything for me. And I'll tell you what, I was down there on that ground. My eyes were open and everything was blurred. My body was offline. All I heard was noise. Mm -hmm. I can move, I can do nothing. And people came up to me. A man came up and he said, hold on. He said, the, the ambulance is coming. Hold on. They, they're coming to get you. And I tell you what, I just knew I was going to hell. I was just waiting on the demons to come to take me. Because I grew up in Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. That's hellfire and brimstone. Yeah. <laughs> so I just knew it was down. I was, it was over. And the demons were coming. And I was just waiting for the demons to come and put me in hell. But I tell you what. <laughs> He woke me up and he woke me up. I didn't wake up on my own. He woke me up and was, I had a collapsed lung. I had to have a partial surgery. My body was pulsating with pain. I mean, I pain, had pain from my head to my toe. No medicine they could give me could stop that pain. My mother, nobody could help me. And I tell you what, I woke up, I gave my life to God. I said, God, I repent. I said, God, please forgive me of my sins, Lord. I said, have mercy on my soul. I said, God, please don't let me die. Please don't let me die. Save me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Don't let me die because I knew hell was waiting. Hell wanted to claim me. But God stopped that blood from coming. I didn't even know I was hemorrhaging. But I was hemorrhaging. I had to have two pints of blood. They couldn't stop me from bleeding because I had to have the surgery. And I tell you, I, I was in pain. They had to turn me before hours. I, my head had a collapse. Long, I was in bad shape. Bad shape. And I was in critical condition. Yes. And I know I was going to hell. And I thank God that I took advantage of that very second. That he woke me up. I didn't take no time repenting. I said, I said, Lord, forgive me. Please don't let me die. Because I'm thinking, hell, eternity, forever and ever and ever. I'm like, Lord, I don't want to go there. I said, help me, Lord. And he sure did. He said, no matter how bad he came to me. And he said, no matter, no matter how bad you're hurting you tell the doctor you better today than yesterday. He said, tell him, don't say nothing else. Just tell him you better today than you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, I, he brought me from death door. And while I went, when I went back to sleep, I was in a trance. There was a pond of water. 
and it was a dove floating around in that water. And the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, he held my right hand. He walked me around that track, around that pond. He walked me from death by to light. That's what he was doing. And I'm so grateful. So I give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. Because I know I can't get close. I'm too close for something. And I know that if it wasn't for his mercy and his grace, I would have been there all these years. Yes, that's right. In hell. Yes. No hope at all. I mean, and I had already been through hell before all this even happened. So on top of this, I had to go through this too. And then losing my baby, it was more than I could bear. And the daughter, the daughter telling me I couldn't have any more kids. It was more than my heart could bear. But I had decided to live. I decided that I was going to raise our other two kids and that I was going to praise God and give him my life. So when I got home, I got into the word of God. I studied and stuck down. Like, if I'm going to know Jesus, and if I'm going to live for Jesus, I got to know him. Because if I don't know him, I can't serve him. So I read that Bible day and night, day and night, day and night, day and night. I kept reading all this word. It was in me. But the day of testing came. The devil came in my room, sat in my bedroom, and sat in my chair. Yes. He said, I'm going to destroy you and your kids. I'm going to take y'all all out together. Mm -hmm. I was horrified. I was horrified. I ran. I ran. My sister, she was an elder. I didn't go to her and talk to her because she would have told me what to do. You know, you know, you know, Satan get behind me. Right. You know, Lucy, get away. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Right. I, I couldn't even think, think of nothing. All I could think about now, I just came out from losing my life. Now, here he is trying to come and take me anyway. And God right. said, not so. God said, no. She belonged to me. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So every time I go to church, that's what I praise him like I do. Because it's branded on the forehead. Right. And I bear the scars of what I endured. And it'll always be with me. But those are those are scars of, of, of life. <laughs> Victory in Jesus. So I just give the glory. I give the honor and the praise for every day. Because I know if it wasn't for his grace and mercy, it would have been a wrap. But through his grace and love and kindness, I'm here. He allowed me to live and tell like so many people. Didn't have a chance to come by and say nothing. Right. They're dead in the ground. But I tell everybody, he saved me. He made me whole. He will have mercy on you. He will save you. He will keep you. You just come to him. You can't do this on your own mind. You can't live holy. I don't care how hard you try. You got to get into your word. You got to study the Bible. And then you got to do what it says. And his word will change your life. Surely you won't have up and downs. Because we live in a sinful world. But through Christ Jesus. He said many of the afflictions of the righteous. But he delivered us out of them all. So take this to heart that Jesus loves you. God loves you. Jesus saves you. Believe his gospel. Receive his word. For the kingdom of God is at hand. That means it's near to every one of us. Because he gave us our breath this morning. We didn't wake up ourselves. You think you said that long clock and you got up because that long clock went up. Oh no. Oh no. He said you're going to live today. And he hoping that you will come to church. He hoping that you'll come on into him. Because there's so much happening in this world. None of us know if we're going to wake up tomorrow. Not one of us. But to think about it, as long as you got Jesus Christ, you are born again and, and, and baptized. You know when you close your eyes, you waking up in glory. And that's your hope in Christ Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord.
through depression. There are times when you get a little bit down. There's times when you have pressure that you feel like my head's about to pop off because of all the pressure I'm going under. And no matter what you're going through, if you'll just start singing this little song, Lord, just breathe on me. Breathe on me. Let the breath of God, the Holy Ghost, breathe on me. He will immediately take that pressure off. He'll immediately set your spirit free. He'll immediately change the atmosphere of the room from demonic oppression to the spirit of the living God. So let would let that word seep into our spirits so that we'll be different than when we walked in the door or when we turn this on our phone or our tablet or our TV set Lord in the name above all others the name of Jesus hallelujah amen 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 Have your Bibles turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 18. I've entitled this message, You're Not Expected to Fight the Battles by Yourself. Amen. All of us are in a battle of some point. It might be a physical battle with pain or some problem that you're going through, some financial difficulty, some lack of something in your life. It might be emotional. It might be material. Whatever you are fighting the devil with, you are not alone. Amen. God is fighting your battles. The battles is the Lord's. Amen. It is not your battle. Hallelujah. It is not your fight. Right. It's the Lord's fight. Yeah. I had a friend in school. Everybody used to pick on him. So I walked around the school to the guys that I knew were picking on my friend. And I was a Christian at the time. But I had whipped a few tails. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Not by my doing, but what they started, me and Jesus finished. <laughs> and so I had a reputation that I didn't lose. So I walked up to these guys and I said to them, If you knock those books out of my friend's arms going down the hall so you can laugh at him having to pick those books up just one more time. I'm going to clean your clock. I went to the next guy. I said, if you slap my friend in the head while he's walking down the hall, just so you can laugh at him, and you think it's funny, it's not going to be funny when your nose is bloody. How many of you know nobody touched my friend from that point on? Because somebody bigger than him fought his battle. That's right. yes. I was at the hospital, at Waycross Hospital the other night. And I kind of forgot I was a preacher. 
because they were stabbing my little grandson, Zachariah, about eight or ten times with a needle. And they were not finding a thing. Now, he has invisible veins. That's what the doctor calls it. And you have to have a sonogram on his little hand to find his veins. And they were not using it. They were just picking it and stabbing it this way, stabbing it that way. Stabbing it. It, something just came all over me and I forgot that I pastored you all. <laughs> and I said, sir, if you stick another needle in that boy's arm, I'm going to knock you through the wall. Get out of here. So the lady brought in a sonogram machine and she says, may I take and get some blood from him? I said, you certainly may. You got the right equipment. Sometimes we need a little help. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about me being ugly the way I was. That was just grandpa coming out. I had to ask him to forgive me and I had to straighten all that out. But the truth of it is, we have an advocate. His name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. And he sees you when you're hurt. He sees you when you're struggling. He sees you when you're going through trials and tribulations and going through the pain and suffering in your body. He sees when your wife is left and he sees when you're going through marital difficulties and he sees all the things that you are not alone. Amen. Those devils can line all up around your property. <laughs> But no weapon formed against the oh, apostle. Hallelujah. He can strategize to destroy me like he tried to destroy Teresa. But he will not be successful because I'm covered, covered, covered by the blood. Hallelujah. Walking by faith. Living in love, I am covered, covered, I am covered by the blood. Jesus has rescued me. That's a good song. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But the way that we are able to stay in the hedge of protection is to walk in agreement yes. with God. Amen. Hallelujah. When you're out of agreement with God, God stands back and says, all right, mother, you want to fight your own battle? I'll let you try. Let's see how far you get. And then after a while, we say, uncle, 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 Lord, help me. I need your help. And you get the help of the Lord immediately. He's right there. That's right. Amen. But you've got to get an agreement with That's the right. Lord. I'll tell you who else you've got to get an agreement with. You've got to get an agreement with your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen. Because there are times when I need prayer. Come on. Amen. And I have to call on you all and say, pray for me. That's right. I need a touch Come from on. above. Yes. Right. It ain't something you can get me. But it's something he can give me. When you pray that prayer, here's what you got to imagine in your mind. All right, you're sitting in your chair and you're saying, Lord, will you help the pastor? Like we sent out a little notice about Zachariah the other day having pneumonia and, 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 and we sent out a thing about praying. All right, and you prayed. Do you know what happened when you said, Lord, help Zachariah? All of a sudden, God the Father on the throne of heaven said over to an angel, That's right. Go down there and minister to my little child. Yeah, that's right. Go down yeah. there and answer Bill's request. Go down there and answer Michael's request. Go down there and answer David's request or Jonathan's request or any of us that prayed. He immediately dispatches angels. But if Michael and I are arguing, or I've got hard feelings towards him, or there's unforgiveness in my heart towards him, if my wife and I are fussing and fighting, there's no agreement. Right. The Bible even says in those cases, the Lord don't even hear our prayer. He don't hear it. 
So, we got to get an agreement That's right. with God, and we got to get an agreement with our brothers and sisters in Christ. If we're married, we got to get, get an agreement with our wife or husband. And I'm talking about if you're a man, you got a wife, and if you're a woman, you got a husband. Amen. 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 <laughs> and your wife is a woman if you're a man, and your husband is a man if you're a woman. That's not we have to clarify that these days. Amen. 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 There is power in agreement. Amen. Matthew 18, 19 through 20 says again, I say to you. That if two of you agree on earth concerning on anything, That's right. not just some things, anything, anything, anything. that they ask, yes. it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. I mean, you know, when God is in the room, miracles happen. Amen. When God is in the room, things break off of us. Yes. Chains are broken. The power of God is unleashed. Yes. Yes. Come on, Amen. Come on. And if nothing else, He comforts us yes, until the trial time period expires. And He says, that's enough. And he comforts us while we go through our valley. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we say if two of you. Now let me clarify that. It's not just any old two. <laughs> I can't go out there and get the drunk on the side of the road. And say let's get an agreement. Hold my hand and let's pray. <laughs> that ain't going to work. I can't have my wife go out there and find the first prostitute and say, let's get an agreement, honey. <laughs> that ain't going to work. I can't even be in agreement with somebody that hates me. Come on now. Come on. Nope. I can't get an agreement with somebody that's got hard feelings against me. I gotta find somebody that's of like mindedness. Yes, yes. I gotta find somebody that believes this book is the word of God. Yes. I can't go to another person that just simply says by label only, I am a Christian. No, no. But they're really not. Come on. They just happen to go to the first church of the frozen, the frozen chosen. I can't get an agreement with those people. I gotta find me somebody that knows God, that knows how to touch God. Yes. I can't find somebody in sin. I gotta find somebody that's got a clean heart, that's walking with God, that's striving for perfection, that desires to walk with God. Not perfect. I'm talking about people that want to strive to be perfect. Yeah, they want to change. They want more of God. They want, they want something. That's who I got to get in agreement with because that's the only kind of person that when we get locked up arm in arm in prayer and fasting and seeking the face of God, we can see things change. Amen. So be careful who you're Two or three are. Yes. James 1, 5 through 8 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, not doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Let not that man suppose he'll receive anything from the Lord. So I can't get linked up with a double-minded man. Today he's saved, tomorrow he's lost. The next day he's serving the Lord, the next day he's just struggling. I got to get in agreement with somebody that's going to heaven. Amen. <laughs> somebody that loves Jesus. In fact, the Word tells us, 2 Corinthians 6.14, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with 
darkness. So I can't get yoked up together in agreement with somebody walking in darkness and think that their prayer is heard. Their prayer is not heard. Amen. Except, Lord, forgive me. Yes, that's right. I need forgiveness. And then he says, if two of you shall agree. And that word in, in the Greek is talking about musical instruments. I don't know if you ever, I had a, I had a church one time where, where the organist uh, played by music and the pianist played by ear. And the song director forgot to say we were playing in the key of, of C. And, and it was written in F, and so the organist was playing in the F, and the, and the piano, player, piano player was playing it in C, and it was a train noise. Everybody was looking around at each other. Nobody was singing the song because the song director was like, uh, 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 I don't know what to do. Because the song, the, 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 the musicians were not in agreement. I used to play the saxophone in the band in the, in the school. And when I played the saxophone one, one particular day, I, I just felt a little bit naughty, I guess, and, and I just blowed a little harder than I should have. And my band director could hear a gnat flip over in his bed. And he heard my sound. He said, Randy Richardson, pack up your instrument and get in the back room now. And boy, I was in trouble. The flutes had to flute it. And the cornets had to cornet it. And the drummers had to drum it. And everybody had to play their part in perfect unison or it was noise. So the Lord says, when you pray in agreement, it's got to be in such unity like a musical instrument has to come in alignment with each other. If I'm asking for a miraculous healing and you're praying for the doctor to find out what's wrong with you, we're not in agreement. That's right. My mother, the Lord, Sister Mamie Williams, she used to say to me, Son, stop fretting about that. She says, You get in agreement with whatever the person is asking for. She says, Remember when Jesus said, According to your faith, be it unto you? That's right. Some people have faith that the doctor is going to find out what's wrong with them, and the doctor is going to give them a medicine, and the medicine is going to heal them. And that's where their faith is at. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's okay. But she said, stop fretting about praying for miraculous healing with somebody who wants the doctor to find out what's wrong with them. Yeah. So you, <laughs> you pray, Lord, give the doctor wisdom, let the medicine work, and touch their body. That's right. If that's where their faith is at, that's where you pray with them at. Yeah. But if this person over here says, God told me not to go. Now, I can't condemn either either side. I've been on both sides, depending on the situation. I've been on both sides of that. There's been times when I prayed until my teeth felt like they were going to fall out. And I still was sick, so I went to the doctor. And the doctor gave me medicine. I took it, and I got better. And then there's been times where I prayed, and, and, and the Lord said, I'm going to heal you. Trust me. It's okay. I didn't go to the doctor. I didn't take any medicine. And I got better because I heard from him that I was going to get better. So my faith had to be lined up with the person and how their faith is. So stop trying to force a round peg in a square hole. It don't work. So find out where people are at and join them in faith and get an agreement. And let that happen in the right way. Praise the Lord. He said we need to get in agreement concerning anything. That word means anything. <laughs> isn't that, isn't that uh, educationally brilliant? <laughs> well, Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask.
and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. When we're praying in the end of our service for prayer requests, we are in agreement right. that God is going to touch those people, deliver those people, or whatever they might need. When we're casting out devils, we especially need to be in agreement. Amen. Yes, amen. My son, one time we were praying over um, my oldest daughter, and uh, she was full of the devil, and and uh, he was starting to pray, and and Alicia and I were in the room, and he turned around after a minute, and he said, "Daddy, you need to leave." And I knew what he was talking about. He didn't have to tell me. I went and left out of respect because he was the one taking the charge over that prayer. But the reason was is the daddy in me was feeling sorry for my child. Come on. Okay? That's right. The preacher in me wasn't present. Come on. The man of God in me was not present. I was only acting daddy. And I was feeling sorry for my <laughs> child. But my son knew the real battle was with the devil. Mm -hmm. And that if I wasn't in agreement, I needed to get out of the room. Amen. Remember when Jesus sent everybody out of the room? Yes. It's because they weren't in agreement. Come on now. In the Old Testament, I believe it was Elijah or Elisha. I can never remember which one was which on this story, but one of them sent them out of the room. And he prayed because they couldn't get in agreement. Sometimes you can't have people in the room if you want to cast the devil out of somebody or you want to see a miracle happen. When you're witnessing, Jesus set people out in pairs because there's power in agreement. Maybe something I can't remember to help somebody, somebody else that's with me can remember. So it's always good to go out in pairs. Some battles are personal and can only be fought by you and God alone. Remember when Jacob wrestled with the angel all night long, and I believe it was Jesus himself, but nonetheless, he wrestled all night long. There was nobody there to help him. He had to fight that battle by himself. Jesus went up on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And he did it alone. Why? Because the battle he was fighting was a personal battle that he had to fight alone. So there's some times that we've got to fight a battle that's personal. And the problem is when we need help, and I'm mostly talking to the men in the room, we got so much stinking pride. Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh me. <laughs> I'm not I'm not talking to the women. Most of them know how to jump up here and get prayer. But all us men, we're like, I'm tough. I'm a man's man. Mm, no COVID can touch me. <laughs> I'll just look at it and COVID will run. <laughs> I'm a man. <laughs> but how many of you know we men sometimes we need some help? Yeah. I know I do. There's times when I need somebody to get in agreement with me, but my pride says, oh, I can't share that. I can't share that. Man, they'll think bad of me. They'll think so. That's been the problem with the church for a long, long time. We have had too much pride. And you know what the Bible says? Confess your faults one to another that you might be healed. Amen. But we don't do that. And there's a big reason why we haven't been able to do that. Come on. Sister Holier Than Thou gets on the royal telephone and says, Oh, have you heard the latest? 
Brother so-and-so asked for prayer because oh, no. he was hooked on pornography. Can you believe that? Oh, no. That's right. Come on. Oh, sister so-and-so, you got to pray because the other day I overheard brother so-and-so talking to other brother so-and-so and he was talking about how he was struggling with lust. Come on. We have gossiped so much in the church that the church doesn't feel comfortable coming to the church, let alone the world. The world don't trust us. Do you know back in the 80s and the 90s, and it's even continuing up to the present, 2024, it ain't hardly a month goes by, you don't hear of some pastor that has failed in some manner or another. They have discovered that they were homosexuals. They've discovered that they have had affairs with women. They've discovered that they stole money. They've discovered that they had all kinds of issues and problems. One pastor I know took a gun and threatened to blow his wife's brains out. Thank God I ain't never been tempted to do that. <laughs> But we don't keep a gun in the house anyway. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I believe you have the right to, though, if you want one. That's your business. But nonetheless, I couldn't believe it. I found out that he put his wife over his knee and spanked her like his child uh -huh. on a regular basis. No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I could just see me trying to put a leash over my knee. <laughs> After I got through wiping the blood off of my nose. <laughs> and maybe I could open up one eye just a little bit. <laughs> I would never try and spank my wife. She's an adult. No. But that's what he did. And they scattered his flock when they found out about it. Yeah, he needed to spank him. <laughs> Somebody. He needed some men take him out behind the woodshed and teach him how to treat his wife. <laughs> In a godly way, though. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> You know, if you beat them and say in the name of Jesus, then you know, you're, just laying, you're laying hands on them. That's a scriptural term. Y'all know I'm playing now. I am, I am not serious about that part. But the truth of it is, is we have gossiped and we have talked and we have shared confidences of other people to the place where not only does the the, the church not trust the that's church, right. but the world doesn't trust the that's church. Right. And, and that's why the church, the, why the world is bad as it is, because the church has never stood up and said, no, that's, that's wrong. Right. That's right. right. We're quiet on our jobs, and we let them all take God's name in vain, and we let them all just carry on and do whatever they want to do, and we never speak up and say, hey, don't do that here. Or if you do that, do when I'm not around. Amen. I don't want to hear that. That's right. <laughs> that don't make you better than them. That just tells them where you stand. That's right. There you go. There are strength in numbers. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. A three-fourth cord is so powerful that it's able from one car to another generally to pull a car down the road. It's got the strength in that cord. Well, we've got to get in agreement with that kind of strength so that we can get our problems resolved quickly. Amen. Amen. A bundle of sticks is hard to break. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you take one little old stick and crack it over your leg and, and that stick will break. 
But you get two or three and you do that and you'll hurt your leg. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We need encouragement this morning. Ecclesiastes 4.10 says, If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Amen. Literally. Literally. I told y'all months, months back, it might have been last year in the summer, I think it was last year in the summer, I got down under my lawnmower, I was out behind my house and that little, used to be a street between my property and my neighbor's property, there's a little street area, but I have to keep it mowed and I had I had gotten under my lawnmower because the belt flew off for the 10,000th time and and when I got down there, I could not get up. And I didn't have the strength to even pull myself up. I had worked too hard, and I, and I should not have even tackled that job. The Lord had warned me. My wife had warned me. I didn't listen to her. I didn't listen to God. I didn't listen to nobody called stubborn, prideful Randy. He said, I can do all things through Randy who strengthens me. <laughs> Instead of the real scripture that I do all things through Christ. But nonetheless, I know somebody who could get me up. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. And I said, Lord, either give me the strength to get up off this ground, because this is sure embarrassing, or please send somebody to walk by. Now, they don't, nobody walked behind my house, but maybe one person every, every two or three days. And then the train comes by, I think, twice uh, a day. So maybe the engineer would have seen me and called 911. I don't know. But I'm laying out there, and I'm thinking, my wife ain't even going to know where I'm at. She's going to think I went to visit somebody at the hospital and just didn't tell her. I'd be out there in the dark before she realized, hey, I might need to go out there and look for him. Because I don't tell her where I'm going. 99.9% .9 of the time. So she wouldn't have had a clue. That's not to demean her. That's just, that's on me. But I'm laying out there and I cried out to God and I said, God, would you please? Well, just so happened. God got my neighbor, Edward. Y'all know Dale's husband, Edward. They used to come here, crib. And I don't know what their last name is. Dale and Edward. That's all I know. But anyway, Edward come out in his backyard and he looked over and he's got good vision because he saw me on the ground way out behind bushes, <laughs> behind my chicken coop. <laughs> he saw me in a place that nobody could see me two yards over. Praise God. Praise God. And he got on his lawnmower and he rode over there to where I was at. And he said, Pastor, are you all right? And I said, no, sir, I cannot get up. But I prayed and God sent you. Praise Can God. you get me off the ground? Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> and he got me up off the ground. Hallelujah. And, and, and he helped me get my belt on. And I said, I'm going to throw it in a, a, where the belt don't do nothing. And I'm just going to ride. And he, he followed me on my tractor. Praise all God. the way back to my house, and then I could walk on in the house. I was fine. Praise God. I had just gotten so weak. Do you know that all of us have a moment where we get weak? Yes. Physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever it might be, and we need help. Yes. And we need to be in agreement. We need to be prayed up so that God hears our cry. He wants to so desperately to hear our cry. And so we get encouragement as we come together and a friend helps us up. Boy, that, that, that put Edward way up there in the notch of, of, of my special people in my life. That he would listen to the Lord enough to come and help me. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Success. Ecclesiastes 4.9. Two are better than one. Because they have a good return for their work. So you want to have success? Don't be an island to yourself. Build a team. 
They're a team of people. Yes. Defense. Ecclesiastes 4.12. If one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. One can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember the story of Gideon when he had uh, the host of Israel to go fight the Midianites, but there was about 120,000 Midianites, and there was probably only about 30 or thousand or so Israelites, and, and, and most of them were scared to death because they didn't want to fight that many people. So the Lord spoke to him and said, tell everybody that's scared to go home. So all but 10,000 men, they were gone. And then God said, you got too many. Too many? 120,000 against 10,000? I think the odds are still, we don't have enough. But the Lord says, you got too many. And so the Lord spoke to Gideon and he said, tell everybody to go down to the creek. And I'm going to separate the people. Everybody that goes down and they get down there and they lap up like a dog. He said, those are the guys I want you to send home. Because you know what? They're not looking at the not enemy. Looking. But everybody that gets down, now I might need help, John. <laughs> everybody that got down on their knees and they dipped that water up and they kept their eye on the enemy while they were getting something to drink. He said, now that's the ones... Come on, Tommy. <laughs> Grab that arm. All right. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Sometimes we need help. I do all right when I'm on two legs. When I get down on that ground, it's hard. But that's how he divided and it wound up that Gideon only had 300 men against 120,000. But those 300 men were in 100% agreement. Yes. They were in agreement with each other. And Gideon, they were listening. What do we do? And he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a torch in one hand. I want you to take a pitcher, a, a, a pottery pitcher in one hand. And, the, and, and, and I want you to, at the, when I blow the trumpet, I want you to crash that, that, that pitcher on the ground so it breaks and makes a breaking sound. And I want you to wave that old, old torch and say the sword of the Lord and Gideon. The Bible says that it confounded the enemy so much that they stabbed each other trying to get up out of their sleep. They thought the next guy to them was an enemy. God blinded their eyes to truth and they were killing each other. And all these guys had to do is just stand back and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's exactly what you and I have got to do. We've got to sometimes step back and see the salvation yes. of the Lord. Yes. And if we will keep an open ear to the Lord and the Holy Ghost, He will speak to us and He'll tell us what to do. You know what I get into from time to time? A state of panic. Do you ever get into a state of panic? Yes, you said stinking yes. thinking. That's right. We get in a state of panic. We start to think, now how am I going to do that? That's right. I can't do that. Here's 50 reasons why I can't do that. But the Lord says, you can do that. Yes. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can get through this battle. I can get through this sickness. I can get through this problem, this financial difficulty. All this is going to come out in the wash. Amen. Amen. It's going to work out. Amen. If I trust Him. If I trust Him. I know the Lord will make a way for me. I know the Lord will make a way for me. If I live a holy life, shun the wrong and do the right, I know the 
some to work at my house. And I could hear my mama, because my mother was the, she'd get on my absolute last nerve, but mama knew how to pray. And mama would see me out working on my car, or working on the lawnmower, or working on something. And I couldn't get a nut busted off of something other. And I'd grunted, and I'd prodded, and I'd pulled, and I'd use levies, and I'd use, you know, anything I could do mechanically that I had learned in leverage and physics and whatever to accomplish what I'd put nut buster spray on the thing, and I'd beat it with a hammer, and, and I'd done everything that Randy knew how to do. And Mama would come out there and say, how's it going? I said, I can't get that stupid nut off of this, whatever. She said, have you prayed? <laughs> And that's when you just want to say, will you leave? Will you get out of here? Because I should have thought of that myself. And my pride was pricked. Because I'd have to say, no, Mama, I haven't, but I will right now. And as soon as I prayed, it's like somebody had already loosened it. And it would come right out. Yes. The other day I was trying to do something and I couldn't figure it out to save my soul. And I could hear Mama say, have you prayed? <laughs> and I said, Lord, thank you for Mama. Teaching me that I need to pray. That's right. And I prayed and the Lord immediately brought to my mind what I was supposed to do. I did it. It worked. It was that simple. Praise God. And if you will just learn how to go before the Lord. And when you can't do it on your own, get help. Get help. Stop being so prideful. The book of James chapter 5 verse 10. I read this. I quoted it. But I'm reading it to you now in the Bible. James 5 16. Confess your trespasses to one another. When's the last time you told somebody your sins? Come on now. Now we're not the Catholic Church. I ain't putting on a collar and I ain't getting a little boot and hearing all your stuff. That's between you and Jesus. Okay? Get your junk to you and Jesus. But there are times when you need to say, I need help because I'm doing this. Amen. And I can't get I can't get the victory. Come on. My own. And you know what? It might just be Brother So and so's done been through that. Amen. And he can sit there and tell you, or Sister So and so's been through that, and she can tell you this is how you get the victory That's in this right. area. That's right. I was struggling. I couldn't get out of my dreams. I, I just I, I, I was feeling bitter towards some people in the Lord. I I done forgiven them in my mind. I done asked the Lord to help me forgive them, and he did. I didn't have any unforgiveness in my heart toward those people. But in my dreams, I was dreaming of putting sugar in their gas tank and slitting their tires. And okay. Dreaming all kinds. Of, and I don't even dream. I don't dream. I, I probably do. They say you dream so many times a night. But I don't dream. I don't remember any dream, any night. And if I have a dream, nine times out of ten, it's a spiritual dream. And the Lord's trying to show me something. And so I asked him what's the interpretation. But I knew this was an evil dream. Me hurting these people and doing things to these people because I couldn't forgive them in my dreams. And I called this soul saint of God, Sister Faye. And I said, Sister Faye, I cannot get this out of my dreams. What do I do? She says, son, you take your Bible. You put it under your pillow. Amen. And she says, you'll never have another dream Amen. in that area. And so I did. I thought it was stupid. I'll be honest with you. I thought it was stupid to put a hard book under a soft pillow and expect to get a good night's sleep. But I, I was tired of dreaming about hurting these people that I had done me wrong. And so I shoved my Bible underneath my pillow and I slept like the baby. Amen. No dream. Next night, shove my Bible under my pillow. No dream. For about three weeks, I kept that Bible under my pillow and had no 
dream. And then I said, all right, Lord, I think I got the victory. Because they say it only takes about three weeks to break a habit. So I said, oh, I'm going to test it out. Took my Bible out, had no dream, ain't had another dream. Since then, that's been at least six, let's see, I've been here five years, so it's been six or seven years ago. About yeah. seven years ago. Haven't had a dream in that area. So it took me confessing my fault to this old saint of God that I knew weren't going to tell nobody but Jesus. Amen. Okay. And I got the answer I needed to hear. Come on. And I got the victory that I needed because I got an agreement with somebody right. that was godly, that had the Holy Ghost, that knew how to touch God, that gave wisdom out of their mouth from the Word of God Amen. and from the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. And it worked. So do you need to get an agreement this morning? If you've got a situation, whatever it is, that you want the Lord to intervene on, we're going to get an agreement. Now, we're not going to talk about it out loud. I just want you to slip your hand up if you've got something that you need God to intervene on, something to work out. And we're going to pray. Father, you see every hand that's lifted. You see every person that's lifting their hand on the internet, that's sitting in their home or on their car or wherever they're listening. I pray in the name of Jesus that whatever it is that they're seeking you for, you're the God who sees it all. And I ask you, Father, to intervene right now in the name of Jesus. Intervene right now in the name of Jesus. Heal, deliver, set the captive free, provide, make a way where there is no way, turn a situation around. God, intervene with a kid that's wayward, that's not doing right, Lord. We get an agreement that they're going to straighten up in the name of Jesus. And we give it all to you right now. And on the 15th day of September 2024, we can look back and say, this is the day that we gave it to the Lord. And we drove a nail in the ground and said, this is it. No more, no more, no more. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for provision. We thank you for answering prayer. We thank you for touching and doing the miracle, the miraculous, whatever it is that we need. We thank you for it, Lord. In the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus. We cover our minds with the blood of Jesus. We get an agreement. We ask you to cleanse us of any sin that may be in us, Lord. That's hindering us from getting our answer, Lord. We pray, oh God, that you will help us if we're married to be in harmony with our wife or husband. Lord, that we're in perfect uh, 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 relationship with you. Lord, that we're in the word. That we're praying, we're seeking your face. And then, Lord, we expect you to do your part now. Because we're doing our part. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.